guys, this is Alison Pryor, and I think uh, this will be a nice painting to teach you today. It's a moose crossing a river, and um, anybody who likes to hunt or likes moose, we could uh, learn how to paint this. So, this is a nice painting. That's the moose, and I'll show you how to paint that in a little while just wanted to show you some paintings that I've done and I want to see if there's anything you like if there is then you can let me know and I'll teach you how to paint it so that's a little winter scene that I did and that's a little cabin yep so that's a few things in that one there and then I did this other winter one and uh, it's got the nice uh, northern lights in it and a little cabin and some winter so if you like that one you can let me know or if you just like something similar to it then you can let me know and I'll try to paint it for you here's another one that I did clothes and line Anybody likes to have pictures of clothes on the lawn. Of course, I'm from Newfoundland, so this is uh, nice paintings we do here. And if you like that one, you can let me know. Let's see what else we got here. I get a lot of requests how to paint houses. Well, I did this little one here. I did it, didn't do too much, uh, too elaborate. I just quickly did it and I could show you how to do that. That's the colorful houses we have in St. John's. So that's a cute little painting. There we go. And what else have I got here? I did a picture of a puffin. Like I said, Newfoundland puffin. So if you like puffins, I can teach you how to paint a puffin. Yep. Hi, Mr. Puff. There we go. So, I might have one more here. And if you want, if you want to learn how to paint any of these, you just let me know. I have more. I'll show you more later. But these are some of the ones that I've been teaching in my art classes. And I can teach them on, on the YouTube if, because uh, I know you're all far away and you can't get into Newfoundland. So, I can teach it to you on YouTube. So if you see anything that you like, just let me know and I will show you how to paint it. So I'll put those away and we'll do the painting that uh, we I'm going to teach you today and um, get you started. Nice moose painting. So here's the painting again. Have a look at it. Take a picture of it if you got to so you can use it for reference. Okay, so the best thing for us to do with this now is to get a bit of tape. I'll put this away. I know. I hate to put it away too. So just get a blank 11 by 14 canvas. And um, 11 by 14 is good. Nice size, not too big. You can also get some paints. I just put some paints on my palette. Okay, so the paints that I use are Ultramarine Blue, Cad Yellow, Cad Red, White, any white, Brown, Burnt Umber, and Sap Green. And um, if you don't have these colors I just mentioned, just use any Brown, Red, Green, Yellow, and White. Brown, Red, Green, Yellow, Red. So any of these colors, uh, use those, whatever you have on hand, because I notice some people don't have the colors and then they gotta they feel like they have to wait to paint but you don't have to wait just use what you have the brushes that I'm going to use are I'm just going to use um, a Bristol brush that's a half inch and just a smaller Bristol brush and I'm going to use a fan brush and I'm going to use possibly up I just got a couple of extra ones in here definitely going to be using a liner brush okay so hopefully you can see that all right so I'll put that away and we'll get started so I'm going to put some tape 
on the canvas just to tape off a horizon. We want to get a horizon. I want to find out, and I, I like taping it off. Not everybody does this, but I like to tape it off because then I can get some idea. I want to start on one part of the canvas first. Let me see if that looks good. Let's see, let's compare that. So that should do it because we'll put our sky and our mountains. Put our sky, let's see. So there's the horizon line. So that's up a little tiny bit. So I'm going to put some mountains here and your sky on top. Some people like to paint uh, differently than I do. I like doing it my way, so you do it your way. Whatever way is comfortable for you. So for the sky, I'm going to take my Bristol brush. And I'm going to, mostly blue, okay, Mo mostly ultramarine blue. And... I'm going to put some little bit of red in there to purple it up a small bit. And a little bit of brown to gray it up a little bit. It's so dark, isn't it? Almost black. That's the color you can also make black with those colors that I just showed you. And then you're just going to put white. And you got a nice change the value of a lighter, lighter grayish blue sky. So just take your paint and go back and forth, long strokes. I know there are people say crisscross strokes, so I like doing it this way. Like I said, I'm doing my paintings my way. Other people do paintings their way. You do paintings your way. That's all there is to it. You don't have to do anything that everybody else does. There are no real rules. There are some rules that you can follow to get a really good painting. But if you want to just enjoy it and have some fun, you go right ahead and do what makes you comfortable. It's it's for you. It's not like you're going out to sell it for a million dollars. Be nice. But it's for you. It's it's to please you. And you can practice and practice and practice and have fun with it and do it your way. Figure out and go to different uh, books and YouTube's videos and see what other ways you can learn to paint, learn color mixing. Color mixing is good to know. Obviously, it's really good to know. And uh, composition is good to know. How to, uh, where to lay your... I put my mouse in dead center, I know. And some of the rules, if you want to go by rules, is they, they do the rules of thirds, which is you would put your mouse or your main object to the uh, left or to the right. But I have this guy in the center because I want the moose to be uh, standing out. So I'm just going to go back and forth with my paint, my bluish gray paint. Now as we get down further, we are going to add more white. We're going to keep at adding white to lighten it up. So we want a really nice light color down here. Brighten it up. Because as the sky gets down, as we all know, it gets lighter on the bottom. There we go. And we will be putting in some nice oranges and reds in a minute. So just get all that on there. There we go. Just get your sky on. Long strokes, long strokes. See how the long strokes gives it a really nice blend. And lots of white paint. Look, lots of white paint. I'm going to need more in a minute. So back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth there we go good look at that we're getting there we're getting there okay so we'll just keep putting some more white on there to keep the paint from drying out on us too much all right let's go back and forth with the white underneath here work your way up into the blue a little bit up as far as you want. Okay, now it's starting to dry on me up here, so you don't want to go, once your paint starts to dry, then you can't blend it, so then don't uh, try to put white up here because it'll all turn white on you, okay? So we'll just leave that for now, so I don't want to waste too much time. It's only a sky, nice little sky. So I think the next thing we'll do is the mountains, okay? So the mountains... And we'll put this orangey colors on after we put the mountains on. 
So we'll just put those mountains on and uh, maybe we could draw them out first to see what kind of heights we want and see the, the shapes that we want. So just take a pencil, that's a pencil, and decide maybe a, a nice lift up here. We don't want it too tall because then it'll, it'll overpower the painting, okay? So I'll just, uh, you guys just make some nice little humps. It's not going to be exactly what I had on my other painting. This painting is going to be a little bit like the other one, but it's going to be different because I can't paint the same painting exactly this twice. It's very difficult for anybody to paint a painting twice and have it exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a smaller flat brush and maybe we'll take this sable brush. Okay, it's a chiseled edge brush, soft, but it still bounces back. Oink. See. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some orangey color. So we're going to take some yellow and some red. Okay, yellow and red, and a bit of blue. A little bit of brown, gray it up. Blue and brown gives nice grays and blacks. And now we're going to take some white, and we're going to change the value of that color. Now it's too brown for me. I wanted a more grayish color, so I'm going to add more blue. Okay. At least you can see what I'm doing anyway. So that way you can you can make up your own paintings and like I say everybody does their paintings their own way and color mixing is is really nice because you get some really nice colors when you mix the proper colors together so just put in your color there we go just fill in your mountains fill in your mountains after we get this done now the mountains then I'm going to um, get ready for another video finish off get ready for other things so we'll do these mountains first so just get your base color down first okay and I'm just I'm even throwing in a little bit more white because you can have different shades it doesn't have to be exactly the same one color all the time that's what I like I like doing different shades uh, in my paintings I, I don't uh, have one big amount of color even when I'm doing grass trees, anything at all, I just take go back and mix up whatever comes out, then I'll use it. So, some people like to make a big mixture of one color and then use that, which is fine for big paintings and something you're doing, a different type of painting. So I'm just laying this on here. Don't worry about the tops right now. And I'm just going to put in more. I'm just laying it in. I'm just playing around with it now, okay? This is a bit lighter. The value has changed to a lighter color that I did. And now you can bring it back again if you want to. More blue. Get a bit more gray. There we go. And then just go and put that in. Whoops. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, then we go and get this over. See how I got the different shades of everything in there? See? So don't stick to one shade. Don't stick to one value of color. Mix in a bit. So what we'll do, uh, yeah, we'll try the sable brush for now, okay? So I may change my mind. So we get some orange. So we're just going to add some red and yellow together. I'm not going to totally blend it. I'm just going to make a bit more yellow than then red, okay? So you see it's not totally blended. See the mess I got there? Let's see what's going to happen. Maybe I better wipe some off. How's that? Okay, let's see what we did here on our painting. Let's see. Alright, so on behind here, we took some yellow and red and just went back and forth behind the mountains, okay? Just back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. All right, so we're going to make the closest to the mountain is going to be the lightest part. All right, go get some more paint if you need it. 
Now I didn't mix it, I'm mixing it on my canvas, okay? I'm mixing it on my canvas. I'm not mixing it. So it's nice and red. So what we're gonna do is add more yellow now. So there's the red. Let's get some more yellow. Here we go. Let's get some yellow. Good. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick up some white next. So we'll get some of that on there first, just to get it started. All right, now we're going to go with the white. I'm just going into my white. I want to lay this down because I need two hands. All right, now I'm going to put some more white on my palette. Get comfy. And some more white. And I'm going to go down here, close to the mountains. Good. Up over the mountain, down over the hill. Here we go. Good. So just brighten it up a little bit there on the bottom. Good. All right, there we go. There, 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 there. And you can push that back into the orange. All right, and down here. There we go, under here. So closest to that, we want really bright. Because that's where the sun is too, down there hiding somewhere. All right. And just underneath those orangey, uh, orangey paint that you made, shadows, or whatever you want to call them, we're just going to go underneath with the lighter color. Pretty simple. Just work your way up into the orange a little bit. Whatever's left over on your brush, you don't want to put too much on there. So that's a kind of a cool sky. I like that. Yeah, we'll leave that. I like that. I think it's okay. Yeah, that's nice. So we can take whatever's left over on our brush and wipe it off in a bit of tissue because we don't want too much left on there. And just scrape on a few more little, little, whatever's left over on your brush. Like I said, don't, don't put too much on there. We don't want to, we want to go overboard, you know. And if you don't want to do this, don't do it. Just keep what you got on the bottom there. You're fine. All right, so we'll just leave that for now. Now, next. What's next? Let's see. So let's look. Pretend. Pretend that this is a picture that hasn't been painted. So say you want to do this picture that hasn't been painted. So you do it in steps and you do one part at a time. So I say, what's next? So I'll say the next thing I'd like to do is this little section here. Because we have the sky fairly done. I mean, you want to add clouds or whatever, you can do that. But this section here would be nice to do next. Because you're coming down on your canvas. You're coming down, you're coming, moving forward. So any, all the trees and flowers and all of this stuff will go on top of these background waters and land. So let's take our tape off, see what happens. Take your tape off, there we go, good. And off, off. Now. We are going to put some more tape on so we can work on that one section. I don't. And that makes it a bit easier. Here we go. So how much do we need? So we just need a little bit. Okay. So for that one section, we just need about this much. Okay, try to get it straight if you can. A little bit harder for me to be where I'm teaching and trying to lean over and all that stuff. So please forgive me, please. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put some green, sap green. And I think we can use the same sable brush again. It's only a small brush. It's not very big. It must be a size. I don't know. Uh, the numbers are, are gone off it. But you can judge by it how big it is. So let's take some green first. Let's just get something started. Let's take some sap green. Come under here and just get some of that sap green on first, okay? Nice. Back and forth. Something like you did with your sky. Back and forth. Long strokes. Good. 
So keep going in here. There we go. We're going to be putting some other colors on top of that in a minute. So just take some little trees. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. We'll do that in a minute. Let's just get this on first. Okay. There we go. Just get that green on there. Now, if your paint feels dry, just take a bit of mist and spray your paints. If it's starting to dry up on you, just mist it. See all that nice mist? You can even mist your canvas if you want. No, it won't go down. Mist your canvas if you want. Just a little bit, not much. You don't want to. You don't want your paints turning to water, okay? So these paints, that you know, they're two paints. They they can dry pretty fast. Acrylic paints can. So you can mist them every now and then just to keep it from drying up on you, okay? So there we go. So keep this going, the green paint. And now we're going to add a little bit of yellow, just for fun. There we go. Hmm. So keep adding the yellow and the green. Okay, some green. I'm not too worried about, right now at this stage, I don't worry too much about what's happening. But I want to get something started and I want it to look nice. Because if it looks nice, it'll encourage you to keep going. If it looks really bad, you're like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then you, you feel like you can't do it. But if you can get one section at a time and you can make that one section look really nice, you will feel encouraged to move on. And you will like what, and as long as you like what you see. If you like what you see, that's all that matters, okay? If you're happy with your painting and you like what you're, what you're doing and, you know, then that's the main thing. Make you happy. This is all about you. Not about me. It's not about anybody else. Only you. This is your little world. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change brushes because I'm not, I can't get those little trees in the background. So we want to get those little trees. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See those little tiny trees there in the back? I want to get those. So the way to get those is to take a bristle brush. With, see how the bristles are spread open? And you're going to tap into your sap green. Okay. And sap green, all right, we'll leave it at that. And tap here at the top and then pull up. Pull up these little trees. See that? So tap on your green at the top here. And pull up. We got some little background trees. Tap, 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 tap. Pull, 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 pull. Up, 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 up. Tap, 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 tap. Pull. Tap, 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 tap. Pull, 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 pull. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, so all the way across. Alright, so. Up, 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 up. There we go, all the way across, all the way across, right on that line, underneath the mountains there. Good. And you just pull up, pull up, and you got some nice little trees, simple as pie. Good. Now what we'll do is, we will add some color to it, that's like here, some red, some brown, some, some yellow, see? Okay, showing you the picture, I hope that helps. I haven't done that before. Well, I've done it, but not quite as much. So I'm hoping that will help you um, get an idea of where we're going with all this. So now we'll go underneath here. I'm going to use this, this uh, bristle brush. That will help spread the paint around a bit more. I find the other brush, is too, it kind of just leaves streaks. But it's good to get it on, get started. Okay, now what we're going to do is, we're going to put on some yellow. Put a little bit of white in your yellow. I think the white and the yellow might help. Let's see. Oh, nice. Okay. So just bring that across. Try not to blend it in totally. Just bring it across. That's it. Just bring it across. Bring it across. There we go. Good. And now what we're going to do is, so keep those trees. 
want that yellow sort of in the center because that's where the light is going to come from and, and we're going to have uh, our light bouncing off our trees and, and all that good stuff all right so then take a bit of red and a little bit of brown so we can get a nice brownish color and just add some of that throw that in there on the side here just to get some color just let it go right into your yellow there we go. You can add a little bit of white to that to lighten it up a bit. There we go. Just drag it over. See, I'm just dragging my brush over. I'm not totally blending everything. I'm kind of dragging it in. Drag it in. Good. So you want to lighten it up a little bit. Just drag it in. Okay. Maybe a little bit over here. There we go. Good. Now, that gives it a bit more color. And drag some of that into the yellow. We can always add more yellow after. Um, you know, the, all the final touch-ups will be done before your painting is finished at the very end, okay? So right now, we're just trying to get everything in place so that we know where everything is. There we go. So, just get some, some paint on there. A little bit of highlight just to brighten it up a little bit. There we go. A little bit of highlight. All I'm doing is adding a bit of white. See how, how that brush is all bristly and spread open and it's really worn out? That's the kind of brushes that I like because I can really work with those. They're fun. They're fun. So I'm just putting on some more of this reddish color. And I would say we could clean our brush and then tap the bottom of your jar and that will get most of the paint out for you, okay? That way you uh, get a nice clean brush. So I get some yellow, a little bit of white. And I'm just going to drag on some yellow and white. There we go. I'm just dragging it on. Now if you don't get this effect, don't worry about it. Just whatever, as long as you get some of these colors on, okay? So I'm just going to leave that like that for now. Good. Now, let's see what else we can do. So, I would say we could take our tape off and maybe we can start to water. Take your tape off. So far, so good. So what we want to do is we want to establish where we're going to put our water. And so it would probably be better if we just drew, drew it out a little bit. So we know that we're going to have um, something going across here, maybe a little flower patch or something. And then we're going to have um, a little bit of land over here. So maybe we can draw something like this, just, just so we know where things are. Maybe just something like this. And we can change that as we go along. Okay? So in here we'll put our water. So what you're going to need for that is your fan brush. There's your fan brush. So it's only a small fan brush. I don't like working with big, big brushes. Not unless I had a big canvas. It's only a small canvas, so we don't need a huge brush. We just want to make it uh, easy. So we're just going to take some blue. And we're going to take some white, make it nice and light. Because we'll come, as we get down further, we'll get a little darker. And we'll just start off with a nice light. And we are going to put some highlights on top of this water that reflects the water and the sky. So let's just get that in, just with your fan brush back and forth. We'll put some little bushes on top of that after. Let's just get our water out first. That's the easiest thing to do that I can think of. If you want to do it the other way, you certainly can. Okay. Now, so you go ahead and put your water on. Now, like I said, I don't mix up a batch of colors and then go exactly with the color. What I do, what I'm doing now, is I got I'm, end up with yellow in it by accident. Okay, so don't let that happen to you. So I'm just going in my blue and I'm changing the color, the values of the color, just so that I'll have some different colors and 
So it's not all exactly the same because water changes, right? Water ch it's okay to go over the lines, don't worry. Just go back and forth until you get what you're looking for, as long as you're happy. Might want to put a little bit of darker blue in here just, just for shadow. Back and forth. Add some white. Back and forth. There we go. Back and forth. Back and forth. Good. Well, you can go on over that. It doesn't matter. Alright, so just as long as you get your water. And try to get it horizontal as you can. Just want to get that water in there. Because we can go back and add things to it after and change it up a little bit. So I'm just mixing my paint back and forth. A little bit lighter here in the center because we're going to put some highlights in. So we'll just start tapping here. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap. And, and stay close to the edge. Stay close to the edge. Stay close to the edge. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere yet. All right. Now you can start. Now you got your little edge done. Now you can start moving out to get your shape your tree. Okay. That'll make it a little bit easier for you. Now just get the shape of your tree. Bring out some some of these branches. Good. That's a nice big old tree that is. Okay, so we'll get and when we put some highlights on it, that will also get a nice shape for you too, okay? So right now it's just a big old blob on the side. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get a perfect tree. Right now I'm doing a video and I'm just having a, a bad tree day. <laughs> okay, so over here, on this other side, right here, we are going to tap in a few little bushes here for now. Just tap, tap, tap. That's all. Tap it away. Tap, tap, tap. Good. That's what your sap green. A little bit of ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. Mostly green as you can see. Okay. Good. Now, that tree, I hope it turns out better than that because it looks kind of pudgy there. So, um, it's okay. I'm If I don't like my tree, I can fix it, but I'm not going to do nothing because we're doing a video and I want to just get this started for you. Now, um, now we're going to do a few little bushes right here. So the same colors. This will make it very easy for you. Green, mostly green, some ultramarine blue, and some brown. And that will really darken it up for you. And then we're just going to put in some of these nice little bushes here. You don't have to have these if you don't want them. I'm just putting them there so you can get used to doing bushes and trees and what colors to use. So get a nice dark green. Um, if you want, if you don't have all these colors and you can't get your dark green, uh, just use black and green. Tap into black, tap into green to get a really dark green. Okay? Marvelous. Now, that's that much done. Good. Now, What's next? Let's see. I would say we probably, while well, waiting for this to dry a little bit because we're going to add some highlights to it, we can add our tree over here, our little sort of dead tree. It's kind of... Let's see now. How about we take this sable brush, flat, nice chiseled edge. I like the chiseled edge brushes. And let's take some brown on one side. And some of that dark green on the other side. How's that? Let's see how that works out. All right, so let's take our brush, um, the chiseled edge like this, and push up, 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 make it a little bit crooked. You want a little crooked tree. Good, and then we'll come down right into our bushes. Now, and then you can widen it out, okay? And make a little crooked, little crooked tree. 
crooked little tree and a crooked little house. Okay, so if you want it darker, we can darken it again after. So we'll make some more. When you add ultramarine blue and burnt umber together, you get a beautiful black color. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So you can take that blackish color and you can put down one side of your brush and you can put the brown burnt umber on the other side. Okay? Good. And use the chisel edge as your um, edge of your brush. <laughs> it was easy for you to say. And just take it out and take another one out and another one out. I'm running out of paint, so we'll just go back and get some more. All right, take it out. Good, and we'll take another one out. You can have as many as you want, and then we'll do some small ones now in a little while. Okay, so I'm just going to go back over that one again. And we're going to darken up our tree. Wait, now that we got all the paint on there. Good, there we go. And darken up our tree. Good, now. Let's see, we got three. Maybe we can take a little branch out of here. Now, let's see how many more branches we want. I don't know. I tell you what, let's get our liner brush, our handy dandy liner, liner brush. See? Now, so what we'll do is we'll get some water in that. I'm going to take my spray. I'm going to spray my paints again. Mist, mist my paints. I'm going to mist my, mist my painting. And I'm going to drag it through some blue, brown and drag it through some of that dark color. And then I'm going to roll it around so it, so it gets a nice thin edge at the top. And then we're going to add some smaller branches. So out and out and the out. Line. That's all you have to do while you're waiting, all right? So so then I will, um, so this is a little big for here, but that's okay. I want you to be able to see it. So I'm going to tape this down. Tape it down where you want it to, to be in the water. So I'm just going to tape it down right here right that smack in the middle and I'm going to take some carbon paper now hopefully this will go through hopefully so I didn't try this I didn't check it out see what was going to happen so let's do our hope hope that it comes out so we don't want this to move we don't mind this moving this is carbon paper black side down. Put it underneath here. Hopefully it will take because it's still damp. Make sure it's really, really dry so it'll work for you, okay? So let's just trace this. So when you do your own freehand drawing, then you will put it on paper first. Don't try it on your canvas because if you make mistakes, you'll have a hard time correcting it. So just do it on paper first and then trace your image onto your painting. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to go here with the back leg and I'm going to trace that. I'm going to check it and look it's coming out. So that's good. So there we go. Uh oh it's moving. Come back here. Alright so we're just going to trace this on. There we go good and that's the moose ear and the antlers and get the antlers on the best way you can like I said do your drawing and make sure and then you can you can size it whatever way you want if you got a, a good eye for drawing then you can go ahead and, and draw it freehand if you can't, just print it off and then 
trace it on the outline, only the outline, to get you started. And then when I do my drawing videos, when I start doing drawing videos, I'll be able to show you then how you draw a moose, a cat, and a dog, and a person. All kinds of stuff coming up. I got lots of stuff coming up. I just have to uh, make sure that I get the time to spend at it rather than do one and then have to leave. How are we doing? Okay, so I look at I I always lift it up to make sure I don't miss some lines so I can get it correct. Let's see if that's any good. Let's see. I think that will do. I think I should be able to get that. There we go. So we'll take it off. So that's the easy way. And now we're going to take that mousse and we're going to paint the mousse. And the, we're going to paint the mousse with a small, the small filbert, um, small, we can use a filbert brush or we can use any brush that you're comfortable with. Okay, but I'm going to try this first today. Uh, the Sable Chiseled Edge. <laughs> Gotta get the names right. So I'm going to, um, so just a piece of paper. So I'm just spraying my palette again. Because because I've been using this palette now for a few hours, it, uh, it could dry up really fast. So I'm just going to uh, spray the palette and spray my mousse with some mist. And I'm going to use brown. Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue, and maybe some green. Uh, you could use red or any. I want a dark color, but I don't want it to be pure black, but I want it to be. So let's just paint that in. Paint the whole thing in. There we go. Paint, 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 paint. There we go. So because now we get into, this, I'm using this brush because I can get up against the edges and it, it'll go around the edges. But now to get to the smaller places, I might need to change brushes, okay? So let's get as much done with this brush as we can. Use your chiseled edge to get around the edges. Okay. You'll see this guy take shape. I don't know if it's male or female, but you know. That's the leg, that's the other leg. I left out the line, see? So, I'll adjust it. And, let's add more paint. Get the shape. Good. Good, good, and down. There's a little bit of room there for the reflections. So, we'll get down. And down. Now we better change brushes in order to get the, uh, the smaller areas. All right, I think that will do. You might need two coats if uh, so you can't see through the water there. So let's just take our um, small brush, with, but not the liner brush, but the smaller liner brush. It's hiding on me. There it is, there it is, just a small little brush. This will help you have more control over what you're doing, okay? So we'll just do the face. There we go, the face. Add a little brown. We're not trying to... I hear some wind outside. Don't get too windy. So and we'll just go in with the ear. And... This is February the 1st, 2016. Now, where does time go? Okay, so we're going to finish the nose, the snout, whatever you want to call it, and under the chin. This is a big old ball of fur or something here. Good. And then you go around here to make sure you got got all the lines covered. We don't want the lines showing. Showing. 
and then we're going to do the antlers. Now the antlers are dark on the back, so I'm going to darken up even more because I want to make sure that you, you don't get the ear and the top of the head mixed up. So I'm just adding a really dark brown, or well, my brown and my blue. Brown and, um, let's see, brown and blue makes a really nice dark color. And you can add any color to it after that. Any, you can add red or green. Yep, and it gives you really nice dark colors. So it would be worth sitting down and doing your colors putting colors together and seeing how nice they come out. How you can make your blacks with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And then adding white to change the values to see how many different shades of grays and add a little bit of red and purplish grays. All kinds of good stuff. Now, I'm just trying to get this in here. Get the antlers in there. There we go. There we go. So once you do this, now you can get more elaborate on the fur and everything. You can, you know, um, you can do a lot more. But, you know, once you do this animal this way, you can do buffaloes and deer. Just get you just draw them on, put a bit of paint on to get, you know, the, the darker color first to get the shape and highlight it and it's done. Now if you want to get into the fur part, I might do an animal for you and show you how, how you can do the fur. Uh, more realistic. So we're going to continue on with this. Almost down there now. Good. I think I'll leave that. That's just to get it started. Now I am going to add another little coat of paint to this little guy. Alright. Just spraying my... just to keep things moving. So I get a bit of brown, a bit of blue burnt umber and, uh, <coughs> and blue this time. So I'm bringing out more on the brownish side. Okay, so we just get that little hump there. Good. And we will clean up the face, the ear. Now I'm not going by any moose. So I'm just trying to figure out where the shadows and the body, the shapes. There's all kinds of moose out there. You can look up pictures of them and then you can get the real, the real colors. There we go. So any adjustments you have to make is a good thing to do them now. Good. Try to get that done there. Square it off. Square it off. His feet are in the water. Okay, now let's do let's shape this guy up. This guy, this girl. Whatever you are, Mr. or Mrs. Moose. Okay, so supposed to be on the brown side. I must have picked up too much blue. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight it so that we get the shape of the body. Bring it to life. Alright. Whoops. Okay, I don't want to lose that hump there because the humps on the nose are important. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my scruffy brush, or am I? I think I'll get my little a little filbert. It's only just a little tiny thing, but it's a uh, it's Bristol, nice and hard there, so you can scratch, so you can scratch it on. So um, I tell you what we're going to do first. We're going to um, put a couple of reflections down here because I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit. When you do your reflections on the mousse, it's better for it to be a bit dry. So let's put that there and that there and that. 
uh, this should come down a little further so it matches the other feet the other hoofs and then the reflection okay now that reflection is too wide so little reflection we'll just do these little things while we're waiting for the mousse to dry now I could take it and get a hair dryer and everything, but I'm not going to waste time doing that that will dry, it doesn't take very long so let's take our fan brush take our fan brush let's get that out of the way so I won't have to be reaching over in front of the mousse on yeah. so we're going to get a little bit of blue paint and your white and we're going to make some water lines down here so that it looks so it makes it look like the mousse is um, has a reflection under the feet so I'm just cleaning off my brush so I don't have too much paint on there and I'm just going to make these little water lines going through here that's it see it makes it look like makes it look like uh, these feet are separated the top feet are on top and then just a little bit of water line on top of those reflections okay so I think that's it for that. Oops, sorry. Again. Oh no. Why do I keep doing this? At least you know you're not the only one. We'll just leave that. Okay. So, now while we're waiting for that, what I'll do is we'll take our little liner brush that I just had. Okay, a little one. And we'll work on the antlers, okay? The antlers is what we're going to work on. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take a bit of yellow paint, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow, and we are going to highlight, uh, oh, I did the wrong side because the light is coming, uh, oh yeah, okay, that's good, that's good, yeah, right side. So the light is coming on the right side over here was where most of the light was that I wanted. Okay, it's like must be coming in this way. So um, so we'll do it as if the light is coming in on this side. Add a little bit of white to your yellow so that you can brighten it up a little bit up here. Okay, there we go. A little bit on the, on the edges of your antlers. All right, there we go, there we go. That will brighten them up a bit for you. And down here, so we're also going to add a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown to our mousse up here, a little bit of brown just to, so there's not pure black, it looks kind of black there, so we're just going to add a little color. That's all, just a little color. All right. So we'll take our little fil skinny filbert brush. I love this brush for these bristle brushes that are, you know, worn because you can you can scrub it, scrub at your paint and move things around. And now the other side, I'm going to add brown and a bit of white to it to make it a nice bright. Now, I'm going to finish this off soon, and then what I might do, one more video after this to do adjustments, because as you can see, I'm trying to rush to get this done for you, and I don't want to uh, go too long. So this is your, <laughs> oh my goodness, this is your mousse. Your mousse is on the loose. So we got to get him, um, get him before he runs away. There we go. Okay, now I fold that up a little bit. I can see that right now that that's not perfect. So you always can make adjustments, and I think I might come back and make some adjustments, but I'm just going to finish this little bit up here for you so you can get some idea what to do. So I'm taking my little brush, and I'm moving the paint around so that it all looks like it's all one antler. Just moving the paint around. Okay, 
Yeah, when I come back, I'll fix those antlers for you. They look kind of odd. That's okay. We'll manage. So put a little bit of a uh, little bit of brown on the edges here. There we go. Just to get them shaped up. With so a little bit of brown. Just lighten it up, lighten up the value of the brown, wipe off your brush, and then start scrubbing it on the back here. Okay, so we just get the shape. And then we got the little hump up here too. And we'll just scrape that on. And then we will put a little bit here and there, a little bit on top of the nose. There, just scrape it on so that it, come, it gives the uh, shape of the moose. There we go. Good. And then whatever's left over on your brush, then you can scrape it on for the leg. Down the leg. If you put too much on, just go back and put some more black in there. Your, your brown and blue. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And then you can uh, go back to the original color until you get what you're looking for. So just, just scratch it on here. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do. Look, that simple. That simple. Can't get any simpler than that. So I want to do a little bit of highlight on the leg, which is here. And I don't know, maybe a little bit here or something like that. So that's all we're going to do. We don't have to do a big lot, but we will get some of that highlight on there. Okay, um, so I'm going to um, get my liner brush so we can work on those antlers a little bit. So my liner brush, the shorter one, the shorter liner brush, and we'll put a little bit of blue, uh, brown, tiny bit of white, burnt umber, a little tiny bit of white so we can get this nice color in here. If you want it darker, you can just put in darker. Okay. And you just put it in like that. Might want to add a little bit of white. Just tiny. You have to go back and forth and get what you're looking for. Okay, because this part of the antlers is brighter than the other part. Because we're going to say that there's some light shining on it. That's what we're going to say. And then we'll finish this up now so you can enjoy your painting and have some fun with your painting. Go into the darker color to bring that back down in here. Just so that we can. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and white to my brush and do the edges here. Just to give it a little bit of a finishing touch. Okay. A little bit of finishing touch right there. Maybe a little bit more white. A little tiny bit. Not too much. Just to show the edge of the antler. Just makes you able to see it a bit better. There we go. And then what I want you to do is grab a toothpick. Grab a toothpick, stick it in white, and for the eye, we'll just put a little dab of blue, yeah? And then we'll take some of that dark brown and ultramarine blue, and we'll add that around the edge of that eye just so we can make it smaller.